So I'm going to demonstrate uh, a groove that I learned a long time ago, and this was at uh, the beginning of hip hop. Um, I grew up in the Bronx. I grew up in Bronx River houses where hip, it was one of the homes of where hip hop started. And when producers started producing hip hop and asking drummers to come in, essentially the sessions that I would do, they would actually ask me to play in a certain way. Like if I played, like if I was gonna play a groove. Many times if I did a groove like that, they would go, no, 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 no. No, try it another way. They couldn't explain it, but they would go, okay, try another way. So I would do another groove, but they would go, no, no, no. So they would go over to the drum machine which back then, it was the early, early days of drum machines. Uh, the machine that most guys was using was either the, before the TR-808 was the Oberheim DMX, or they were using the Elisas, and then they started, or right around the same time, they started using the TR-808. But the main drum machine back in the beginning was the Oberheim DMX. So all you vintage guys, you already know, and all you are, aren't vintage guys, go to the internet, look it up on YouTube, you'll see what I mean. The hi-hat sound had three sounds. It had this, it had this, and it had this. It didn't even have a full uh, hi-hat that opened so when you hit the closed hi-hat, it would close. It would sound like this. That was the sound. Now, perfect example of that, if you listen to a song by uh, a singer named Melissa Morgan, she had a hit song called Do You Still Love Me? It's a ballad. Look it up. You'll hear the drums. It might make you laugh a little bit, but that, that was the drum sound. So I happened to be in Cameo for three days. They called me down from New York uh, after seeing me in my local band and said, uh, can you do the tour? <laughs> and I got to work under Larry Blackman for the three days, and I learned Larry's style was a lot like a hip-hop style, especially when they played Word Up. Um, Word Up is a very kind of rude rock funk, hardcore beat, but it was the technique in his uh, stick technique on the hi-hat that I use to this day on, on some songs. And it was the same kind of technique that I used when I started playing hip hop because they wanted me to in, imitate the DMX drum machine and it had that sound. So I had to find the right placement on the hi-hat to get that sound. And here's the placement. Now first, you're not using the beat of the stick. That's not what you want to use. You're using the side of the stick and you're hitting almost in the middle of the hi-hat and you're holding the hi-hat down very tight. So this is the sound. That's the sound you'll get. Not a lot of ghost notes in your snare. Bass drum is in your face. Now I'm gonna demonstrate the groove for, for Word Up. And this is coming from Larry Blackman sitting down teaching me how he wanted it to sound. Okay, so here we go. Now, if you notice, there were no grace notes, no ghost notes at all. It was all two and four, hard, straight ahead beat, because if you listen to Word Up, it has its elements of rock and roll in there, and the sounds that they use on the guitars, bam, bam, ba bam, 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 ba bam, ba ba bam, bam. So I actually use that when I'm playing uh, a song in our set with Nile Rodgers and She called Soup for One. I use that same exact technique. Now for the hip hop, I'll, if I'm doing an eighth note groove, I will do it with no accents. I'll do the same exact thing. The hi-hat is really tight and I'm holding it. And this, this, when you get into the groove, notice how I keep that sound going. No accents, just straight ahead, open hi-hat a little bit.
I want you to experiment with that. I want you to try that somewhere. Just do that beat somewhere and watch how the people start moving. I don't care where you are. That is a beat that every time I play that beat, everybody starts going, oh, yeah, that's the beat. Larry Blackman, to me, was the guy who really showed me how to get that sound, that not be afraid of hitting the drum and getting that tight hi-hat sound and holding down the, the, uh, a killer groove for the band to be able to sit on top of and do their thing. So it's a hip-hop groove. It's a funky groove. It's a rock groove. It's a groovy groove. <laughs>